Hello and welcome to Google Cloud. I'm Drishti and I have Michael with me. We are solution engineers for Google. Today, we will show you a demo that depicts one way to modernize your legacy Java applications using Anthos on Google Cloud. Java is the most common runtime when it comes to deploying applications in production environments. Consequently, it comes as no surprise that most companies are intent on protecting their past strategic investments in Java, including retaining internal Java developer expertise. There are hundreds and thousands of existing enterprise Java applications. Most of them are actively maintained, but are not being actively developed. Patching and maintenance of the application and its infrastructure continues to grow. The only way left to modernize these applications is to rewrite them which is tremendously time consuming. At Google Cloud, we have identified few different solutions to address the pain points and today we will be showing a demo of option number one, modernize with containerization. When you onboard Java application to container with Anthos, an automated development process with a software pipeline, you see a 37% TCO savings instantly. Furthermore, automating testing and refactoring the application, one starts to see an additional 78% in TCO savings. First, let me provide you with a few anecdotes so that the demo resonates better with you. Hipster Shop is a company who has modern online boutique website running on Google Cloud. They also maintain an on-premise VMware environment that is primarily hosting legacy applications, most of which are no longer getting new features and are simply keep the lights on apps. One such application is their legacy CRM Java app, which they would like to modernize and run on Google Cloud. Hipster Shop's Google Cloud environment, they have Anthos clusters running on Google Kubernetes engine to host their modern applications. They utilize Anthos configuration management to keep common Kubernetes configuration and policies in sync and up to date across the clusters. The source of truth for these config files and policies must reside in a Git repo so Hipster Shop leverages their own instance of GitLab running on GKE. They also use Anthos Service Mesh on their production clusters to collect mesh telemetry, define service level objectives, and secure communications across the microservices that make up their applications. In their on-prem VMware environment, Hipster Shop uses vCenter server appliance installed on an ESXi host to manage their inventory of virtual machines. To begin modernizing the apps running on these VMs, Hipster Shop's operators needed to set up Migrate for Anthos to snapshot their VMs and generate their container images. The legacy CRM Java application is deployed on a WebLogic application server. They also installed the WebLogic server Kubernetes operator on their Anthos cluster to automate the deployment and management of a WebLogic environment running on Kubernetes. Let me now show you these components running live in VMware and Google Cloud Platform. Hipster Shop's VMware ESXi host is running on an on-premise bare metal machine. They manage and configure their VM inventory through the vCenter server appliance. The legacy CRM Java application that Hipster Shop's operators will modernize is running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux VM that you see here. WebLogic server is installed on the virtual machine and provides the WebLogic application server that the legacy CRM application runs on. Here's the front end of the Hipster Shop's legacy CRM Java application. The application follows standard Java Enterprise Edition design principles. For example, the domain and the facade layers of the application utilize Java Spring Framework and the Java Messaging Service and the presentation layers use Java server pages and faces. Let me now show you Hipster Shop's modern cloud infrastructure running on Google Cloud Platform. Hipster Shop's modern online boutique is running on two Anthos Kubernetes clusters, staging for testing and production. These clusters will also host the legacy CRM application after the migration from VMware. Both of these clusters run on Google Kubernetes engine, but with Anthos, Hipster Shop can have clusters running across multiple cloud and on-prem environments, such as AWS or VMware, and they will be viewed and managed from the Google Cloud console. 
There is also a separate Migrate for Anthos processing cluster that will run the migration of the Java application from VMware without having to worry about production applications being affected. Finally, you will see HipsterShop's GitLab cluster running on GKE to host their Anthos configuration management repo. I will now pass it off to Michael who will play the role of a HipsterShop's operator and will modernize the legacy CRM Java application using Google Cloud's Anthos solution. Thanks, Drishti. I will first use Migrate for Anthos to containerize the HipsterShop legacy CRM application so that it can be deployed to the Anthos clusters running on Google Kubernetes engine. Migrate for Anthos uses the MIGCTL command line interface to define the source and the destination of the migration and to kick off the migration process. As you can see here, I have already set up the VMware environment as the source of the migration. To begin the migration of the legacy CRM application, I first create a migration plan using the MIGCTL command line interface. The migration plan will provide details such as the VMware virtual machine that hosts the source application and where the new containerized images from the migration will be stored. Migrate for Anthos is able to determine what files from the virtual machine are needed to produce a containerized image of the source application. I only need it to specify the directories that should not be included in the migration and the directories that contain data that should be persisted to a persistent volume. When I finish running this migration plan on the Migrate for Anthos processing cluster, a set of artifacts are automatically generated for me and stored in a Google Cloud storage bucket. I can download these artifacts to my cloud shell or local machine. These artifacts include a Docker file to update my source application's container image, a persistent volume on a Google Cloud persistent disk that contains my source application's data, and a Kubernetes manifest that I will use to deploy my application to a Kubernetes cluster. In the Docker file artifact, I can see that the Migrate for Anthos runtime is used as the base image and it's combined with a non-runnable base image that contains a replica of the source virtual machine. I can also make updates to packages in the container and can upgrade the Migrate for Anthos runtime in the future for new releases or bug fixes. I can make changes to this Docker file as I would to any other Docker file. I make the changes, rebuild the image, and push to a container registry, such as Google Cloud's private container registry. In the Kubernetes manifest file that was generated for my application, I have a stateful set with Hipster Shop's legacy CRM container image specified in the image field. The WebLogic admin console and the Hipster Shop legacy CRM are exposed on port 7001, so I also expose that port on the source application's container. A load balancer service is also defined so that the application is accessible from a browser. Finally, there is a persistent volume that specifies the Google Cloud persistent disk, which contains the legacy CRM migrated data and a persistent volume claim that mounts that volume to the Kubernetes container. To deploy the Hipster Shop Legacy CRM application, I apply the Kubernetes manifest file to my staging Anthos cluster, where I will be able to test the application's functionality before releasing the application in production. Once the deployment is complete, I can navigate to my Kubernetes services to find the endpoint for my Hipster Shop Legacy CRM application. it seems like there is something preventing the application from loading. Luckily, I know exactly what the issue is. By default, all new applications on the staging and production clusters have a Kubernetes network policy that prevents external traffic from reaching the container. This network policy is defined in a Kubernetes configuration file that is stored in Hipster Shop's Anthos Config Management Repository. As Drishti explained earlier, Hipster Shop is using their own instance of GitLab running on GKE to host their Anthos config management repository. This repository contains Kubernetes configuration and policy files that are automatically applied to Hipster Shop's staging and production clusters, and the configurations and policies are kept in sync with this source of truth repository to prevent any unwarranted deletions or changes. The Anthos Config Management Repository is structured in a way that allows me to apply configuration and policies 
across all clusters at an individual cluster level or at a namespace level. If I go to the directory for the namespace that contains the hipster legacy CRM application, I can open the network policy.yaml and I'll see the policy that is currently preventing me from accessing the hipster legacy CRM application. I will make a change to this configuration file to allow all external traffic to reach my application. And I will commit my change to the repository. I can now go check if my configuration took effect by refreshing. Great, I can now access the Hipster Shop Legacy CRM. Only this time, it's running on an Anthos Kubernetes cluster. The network policy change that I made in the Anthos Config Management Repository was almost immediately synced across my staging and production clusters. After testing the Hipster Legacy CRM in the staging environment, I can promote the application to production to begin taking advantage of the rich feature set of Anthos Service Mesh. Anthos Service Mesh provides traffic management, observability, and secure communication across all of the services running on my Anthos clusters. From this single pane of glass, I am able to view the 10 microservices that make up Hipster Shop's modern online boutique website, but I'm also able to see the legacy CRM that was just migrated from VMware. Anthos Service Mesh automatically proxies all requests between services and collects a standard set of metrics without having to make any changes to the application source code. I see those metrics displayed in this table, and I will see them across many of the other Anthos Service Mesh screens as these metrics help gauge the performance of my application services. Another helpful view in Anthos Service Mesh is the topology view, which again shows the same services that are running on Hipster Shop's Anthos clusters but in a graphical format that highlights the inbound and outbound connections of each service. And I can see here the Hipster Legacy CRM service that I just deployed. If I click on the service, I will see the set of standard performance metrics displayed in the widget on the right. Now, as an operator, my job requires that I keep all of Hipster Shop services running across the staging and production clusters at an optimal state. You might ask, what is an optimal state? And the answer is that it really depends. Each service is different. There may be some services where a slight degradation in performance will negatively impact the end user's experience, while other services may not be as delicate and slight performance changes will go unnoticed. With Anthos Service Mesh, I have the ability to set service level objectives or SLOs for each service so that I can proactively monitor Hipster Shop's applications help and ensure that end users are not having a negative experience. I have already set up an SLO for Hipster Shop's legacy CRM application. Let's take a closer look at how I define this objective. The metric I'm interested in monitoring and maintaining for this service is latency or how long it takes the Hipster Shop legacy CRM service to respond when it receives a request. Next, I specify my latency threshold. That is the maximum amount of latency I'm willing to accept for my service to be considered at an optimal state. I set the threshold to be 20 milliseconds. I then set the time period I want to use for evaluating the SLO to be a rolling one day period. Finally, I choose a performance goal. With my goal set to 90%, I am saying that the Hipster Shop Legacy CRM Services latency should be below the threshold of 20 milliseconds 90% of the day. So that wraps up our Java application modernization demo with Anthos. In this demo, you saw how a Java Spring application was migrated off of a virtual machine running on VMware to an Anthos Kubernetes cluster running on Google Cloud's Kubernetes engine. You saw how a Kubernetes network policy or any other configuration or policy file can be synced across multiple clusters in a matter of seconds using Anthos Config Management. And finally, you saw how an operator can use Anthos Service Mesh and the observability metrics it provides to set service level objectives on their containerized services. Thank you, and we look forward to showing you more application modernization tools on Google Cloud in the future.